yup matie ka bino la kelia ye sams recipe obero gira mura madano weng mare uganda jeme pa sams tima poli kine obero crisps melayata crisps megonja cookies odi berenge kemukene mapola ta nong jeme pa sams snacks e supermarket duju mati loberman sams snacks mm no apo apo ame mite ko meching ario ni ndwa ye apiara dek we chel mi ma beach mwaka ali bario ki piara rio we are your 2022 abijol in mecho kama i can meche uganda eni i want lo tv you pwa me ru pentin ania ema acquire kara chel kila dir patro bat ru bi choni ning pat ati ma be ema choki ni m ngi mwa rat food pe ati o mere mort ke ta change win eh tabia ta ti chakama be iri Ah, chapia tima be, yen mo wate kana na emere ni wilo bungo wate kati me kien pinya pat pat, kine ano kira no dano tika kuo kwe de, tam mo ma pat e ano gimo rong pe, an ka ka an chalo an gira chia tio ma e, dua tu mo do, chia na olo do do ni account, lo ka chia na dong lo ka da, be chia chia kamo e kian be chia yuganda e ni wait me tika po e wiu ni chia na wa futi e five four seven a beach ang wen. A biero is star times Uganda ini kamo e kian metie ye kiti gul ki kampala kono beda kiti ki decoder watie channel two three nine Rio adek abungwen ipe ki star times chare downloading app wa makiloni vision digital experience imbere ki kera mene anwa kamo e kian metie ye iwi lo eni ulo wambiero wa iwi ni wabiri kan chake cheng baraja wa cheng a beach chawa adek wa ichawa angwen kanya mungo manu cheka ti me kian pin kumbeti kwa mier metie kono ak mene anwa Lok me luchaden kuar luchaden remo me niadua dek niadua doa di hari orang ke kian kau dalam bagus aku word word meli meli ye bisanya barara lira ini beru kikar me covering dalam kita aku lira lawu doa lok muka tu aye ni ngarachel doa kuar nace ati aku ruin madu pia o nama gonggo depan geno tema aye ni kira wajah ni dalam tu ke issues ni lok mano que não querem dar médico condições, mas não porque nem aí com a matéria tem. Do e não né, que o doutor pô né, o meu doutor, o meu tipo doutor, pô do boca dá no morte morte, challenges pelo tié. Que bem o de né, ba, me gonei porque ninguém não quer com a mo causing tal né, porque mo collapsing me tira um quero bem ano. Do tié né, matéria tié nem o mundo né o new what was the cause of death detect ento polisi ukwanya kume kitera kwa timu post mortem pimingi ni polkar kwa ngara moto kime rona na zit cardiac arrest zit pressure ngao kikume mukelonga tha ma mege ento lukrista yabo na pigo beru kiluaro in fact they are more energized because why she has died in Christ ni tha i niye chi noni gina ni timu gina ni timu mego mati aki rubirizi rubirizi tito kwa Ah, uh, that is a uh, western side. Ne a ke tika bini karo through masaka. We po ma be ni mwa ario mukarangage. We had a similar scenario. Ma matters ma a ke Kenya, all the way from Kenya. Mutako ramping ikumge. Unero gena di gono chokena pichel. Chi noni any gym ma you must expect along the way ma no gym tika ngo tika word chera nyim. So gimo ma nyen to to alpe and to to Dah nak pingi kau ni, biar mabiru tu yang jadi benda pat. Yes. Igu marah ngarachel, mati ke akhir rubirizi 
me uwar neni me niye akwa na chakuru njala wo ma enbe pia o na mgongo era kira wachika wachine kanye walegu ni tibune uywe ikabedu me kuch tinda kaye yupwa matien we rupintin wa edor mapat wachiki dun magitika a kibot national forum for people living with HIV AIDS network Uganda para pange kare uwenya about na fufano tigime dor na yano dana magitika kwa kituo jonyo magitika kwa ni ni nkarman ma COVID-19 tiyo matea kutuwa dana ronyi tiji chingi Luti anu gubero gang luti la bon kwa luti anu magiti kitu ojoni kwa giti kwa ni ninglo me stigmatization chemo talk pe jamu magiti kitu ina ye teach pa na fufano ma kumbeti Amerika kagam kongta mi kome lock inim no gine ma chemo pera tia kumi ro dano ng'e in kete panya kwa ni tu ojoni futi tia kwa dwa tia kinywa Take in Gaiwa, take on Wegiwa, Lumegiwa, everyone. Don't know, my mate. Down Tamani PM Picky Lorry, yeah, don't pay. And talking now, change we, change we, Jomano get ye, change we, Kiwajani, Jomato, Magito, talk it to Jonio. Cek cok dah nak pat tahun ni nak cek. An 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 pat ni, baju aku yang ramai tamu pian tu jangan dorri. Kaf joma furu no no pi food pecuer cun dano. Food late. Joma tin nongo tu jangan food late. So pian tengen dano furu meter ada dah ni meguake. Dano miru guake, mana mian cek. Kira ni organisasi yang cakap nak fufano ni. Kita kah karaoke polis ni awareness campaign. Pm kita kat timur ni la ping la ping. Kau kubiru kau buat jual kain jual wan ini mau artikel lock kembali. No angayo ni okay challenge yang ngah ma forty kaya lo dano. Covid dia ento covid obu chang covid obu tum tu ojonyo has been here as old as I am. Yes. Di timur ni. Anak kita jual amade amun ni nong nong dia. Dah tika dah ye, dah tika war ye. Now ngah ma miru dano tim ni wish protect the next generation yes. because ka wa beru ka beru ni wa pewa gwake then wa nyu allo tin weng mano kom ginga kom gelet ketika tim gimono ke lon the 90 90 90 policy mm. now the 90 90 policy ni dano pierre bon wan e ko mia chel meru go pi meme ngay yot kom ge dano pierre bon wan e ko mia chel meru go chak nong yat dano pierre bon wan e ko mia chel meru go beri yat Gulup cek mati, mada tak wajib igi. Gua 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 yot kongi, yot kongi. Piem ka inti nongo yat mai ilu buji mada kongi aje ngayu ne. Kau ngayu ke keri yat, kau ke keri yat nongi cek lup lokang oh, loka dakta. Menurut it is only advantageous buat him. Buat ni ada jomat buang mai gimunyo, mai pegi gimunyo yat. Ah yat gimi tu ojonyo. Geti mungkin nak keluar relapse. Mungkin nak oh mui anda keluar ni boleh cop. Mui anda oh loki boleh cop. I all ki boli chou kaya ta chi don konyi ngon. O lo pare. No, you should never get tired. Jomo kene o, i mwini ki luwaro, jomo no si beri chou kwen ge. En chi mu tok dong yon stigmatization. Jomo kene na meke mwonyo yad me tika tich nyo ke gang kwan yon ngon. Dan nyang ni in kumilir. Enro jomo na fufano giti ka wachi ni. Dan mwiru pegu ol. Stigmatization lo chi mu tok bere mwiru kwen nyang ni. No gu nyang ni. Eni pegi ndachi ma peti ngarmo ma tuo jonyo po affecting one way or another. Kapo fe affecting in, affecting your loved one, yo ngarni mo, yo wati mo eken, peti e gang mo, iwilo wo eni ma tuo jonyo pe affecting. Kumbedi ka amire ka wano wachia ka wanen, lok matika a ki bot dul me na fufano kong. Wachia ka wanen kong, duwan ki chel eni, kada kwa dukwa mete ki yup eni. Hello viewers, you are watching One Luo TV right from Arua City. Now, we this is the time for us to discuss a pertinent issue about the plight of persons living with HIV AIDS in Arua City and West Nile in general. I'm privileged to have here with me my guest, that is uh, Mr. Kokole Jack. Mr. Kokole Jack is the coordinator of Arua City Network for persons living with HIV AIDS. So want to understand the plight of the persons living with HIV AIDS in Arua City and West Nile, especially after the long lockdown period that resulted uh, because of the COVID-19. I'm glad to have you, Mr. Jack Kokole. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Now, Mr. Jack Kokole is uh, 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 one person who has lived with HIV AIDS for about 20 years and we are proud to have him. 
briefly let me listen to you about uh, the Nash, the forum of persons living with hiv aids yes that is enough fun now fun in full means national forum of persons living with the hiv aids networks in uganda now fun was formed in the year established in the year 2003 may the month in the month of m in the month of may and nafano is the umbrella organization for the people living with hiv networks in in all the districts currently its membership is in 135 districts and 11 national uh, 11 national forums. Nafano has got its vision. It's, it is people living with the HIV AIDS able to live a quality, productive, and sustainable life in a sustainable manner. And I guess that is the life you're living now. Yes, that is the life I'm living. Briefly tell me, how, how has this uh, association empowered you as a person living with HIV AIDS? Oh yes, this association has empowered me and all of us who are in this uh, constituency in many, many ways. And uh, since the formation of uh, Nafufano, it is started to go along in all the districts to map up the, to map and mobilize people who are physically living with HIV so that they come together to be trained with the more uh, issues concerning HIV and AIDS, and I was one of those. So Nafano empowered us so much, and uh, it made us now. It helped us to to establish these networks in the districts, particularly even in in the West Nile. All the former districts, the, by then we had these 56 districts. We had enough trainings uh, concerning all other issues. That's why we are still strong and we are continuing to so if, if if i'm to ask you to do a reflection where you have been and where have you reached what do you say i've been f so far but i've gone a long way but still the journey is to be going again what do you mean what i mean is now our mission is we are to fight this pandemic and it is to come to an end but still there are some gaps there are some issues they still uh, take us backwards and, so and of course that's what we're interested in and as we continue to have the discussion we will be able to talk about some of the gaps that uh, that you probably want to mention here now let's let us take us back to the center of the discussion uh, we did talk about COVID-19 pandemic, how it disrupted activities, and uh, certainly, not even certainly, but of course, ultimately, persons with, living with HIV AIDS are among the persons most devastated as a result of the COVID-19. So we want to understand, what is the situation like among uh, the persons living with HIV AIDS since the lifting of the COVID-19 lockdown? Yes. And before that, during the lockdown, of course, most of the activities of people living with HIV AIDS were paralyzed. Even from Ministry of Health, they said the activities, for instance, the peer, the, the peer mentors, the peer educators have to suspend the activities, have to communicate to the people using phones and, uh, and uh, activities in health facilities were reduced at a certain level because they wanted to decongest the population in the health facilities whereby now some people could not have the access to, to come for treatment. Those who could come, there was transport issues, transport expensive and more so there was no money for anyone to uh, to achieve that one, so there was interruption in in in, in taking of the, on the drugs. People missed their appointments, and uh, p missing appointments for drugs for long, people 
their viral loads got suppressed. They were weak. They were very vulnerable, such that others even others lost hope. They were so desperate, stressed, and others resorted to even drink alcohol. Others were almost to commit suicide because they were here and there. Their, their, their rights were abused, violated, because there was no transparency now. Service providers were trying to take the drugs where the people are. Whereas some people, despite that, they accepted that they are SF possible, they go for, for, to take their drugs. They didn't want to expose themselves anywhere. But taking drugs now up to home, everywhere, it Meaning that there was stigmatization. Actually, I, I was just about to come, I was about to talk about that. Also, we in the media, we got reports that uh, there were efforts to take the drugs to the communities. But again, the issue of stigmatization where those who thought that they would not pick drugs within their community were having challenges. First, elaborate more about that. People who were not able to pick drugs from the community they come from because certainly... If a uh, person A is going to see me picking drug, will start talking about me. This is the experience that we had. Yes, and that's why others either deliberate or what their, their contacts they to, huh? Their contacts were no longer there. There was now communication gap, and the others will not be found. That's why they said they were lost clients, getting lost. Others they deteriorated so seriously, and even many many of us died. By the way, by the way. But not because of COVID, not because of HIV. Do you, do you remember of uh, people you know who succumbed in that uh, period, dangerous period? Yeah, you know, many, 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 many friends who are, have gone. I, I don't think I should mention their names here. It's okay. I just wanted to have a, a justification here. Now, uh, what about the, the income level that reduced and uh, feeding challenges? Because we certainly... For, for you to live longer, you need better feeding. Uh, uh, yes, I was still coming to that. Still, I'm talking during that period of COVID. Those were the challenges. Because now, those ones who are struggling to get the daily income, lost those, that income. Now, food was scarce. There was no food. They became malnourished. They became mal malnourished. And that is why others even refused to take, to take their drugs. Yeah, I refused to take their drugs. And uh, also, there was discrimination when government uh, thought of giving some support to vulnerable people. Instead, they considered people like Boda Boda, the saloon people, the drivers, they said they are vulnerable. Whereas the community of people living with HIV are more vulnerable. That one we call stigma and discrimination. Yes. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Jack Kukole. Now, we want to understand a few things. Uh, uh, yes. um, this one, you had asked me to give the situation, the current situation. I think right now, they are struggling. And they are, they are hope, they are now storing their hope. Because they, they lost actually hope. Now, now, now uh, activities are going on. And uh, the peer mentors, the person living with HIV AIDS, are giving the help, going, adherence counseling is, is being done, follow-up is being done, and the referral is being done. Are the so people coping up well? I'm also sure that there are those who lost jobs. The response is coming. Job. There are those who lost jobs, living HIV who lost jobs. Yeah. Are they coping up well? They, 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 they are struggling, but they, they, they are struggling, but still there's, there's a lot of... West Nile in general. I'm privileged to have here with me my guest, that is uh, Mr. Kokole Jack. Mr. Kokole Jack is the coordinator of RWS Network for persons living with HIV AIDS. So want to understand the plight of the persons living with HIV AIDS in RWS and West Nile, especially after the long lockdown period that resulted uh, because of the COVID-19. 
I'm glad to have you, Mr. Jack Kokole. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Now, Mr. Jack Kokole is uh, a, a, a one person who has lived with HIV AIDS for about 20 years. And we are proud to have him. Briefly, let me listen to you about uh, the, the forum of persons living with HIV AIDS. Yes, that is in a fun. In a fun so it means that's one forum of persons living with the HIV-AIDS network in Uganda. Nafano was formed in the year, it started in the year 2003, May, in the, the, the month of May. And Nafano is the umbrella organization for people living with the HIV networks in, in all the districts. Currently, its membership is in 135 districts and 11 national, uh, 11 national forums. Nafano has got its vision. It is people living with the HIV as able to live a quality, productive, and sustainable life in a sustainable manner. And I guess that is the life you're living now. Yes, that is the life I'm living. Now, let me tell me, how, how has this uh, uh, association empowered you as a person living with HIV AIDS? Oh yes, this association has empowered me and all of us who are in this uh, consistency in many, many ways. And uh, since the formation of uh, Nafufano, it started to go along in all the districts to map up the, to map and mobilize people who are physically living with the HIV so that they come together to be trained with the more uh, issues concerning HIV and AIDS and I was one of those so it empowered us so much and uh, it made us now it helped us to, to establish these networks in the districts particularly in, in, in the West Nile all the former districts by then, to, we had 56 districts to help enough trainings concerning all other issues. That's why we are still strong and we are continuing to. So, if, if, if I'm to ask you to do a reflection, where you have been and where have you reached? What do you say? I've been so far, but I've gone a long way but still the journey is to be going again because what do you mean what i mean is now our mission we are to fight this pandemic and it is to come to an end but still there are some gaps there are some issues that still uh, take us backwards and, so and of course that's what we're interested in and as we continue to have the discussion we will be able to talk about some of the gaps that uh, that you probably want to mention here now let's let us take us back to the center of the discussion uh, we did talk about covid 19 pandemic how it disrupted activities and uh, certainly not even certainly but because ultimately persons living with hiv aids are among the persons most devastated as a result of the COVID-19. So we want to understand what is the situation like among persons living with HIV AIDS since the lifting of the COVID-19 lockdown. Yes. And before that, during the lockdown, of course, most of the activities of people living with HIV AIDS were paralyzed. Even from Ministry of Health, they said the activities, for us, the peer, the, the peer mentors, the peer educators, have to suspend the activities, have to communicate to their people using forms. And, uh, and uh, activities in health facilities were reduced at certain level because they wanted to, to congest the population in the health facilities. Whereby, now some people do not have the access to, to come for treatment. Those who would come, there was transport issues. Transport expensive and more so 
there was no money for anyone to, to achieve that one. So there was interruption in, 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 in taking of the, of the drugs. People missed their appointments. And they missing appointments for drugs for long. People, uh, their viral loads got suppressed. They were weak, they were very vulnerable. Such that others even, others lost hope. They were so desperate, stressed, and the others resorted to even a treat alcohol. Others were almost to commit suicide because they were here. Their, 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 their rights were abused, violated, because there was no transparency now. Service providers were trying to take the drugs where the people are. We raised some people, despite that they accepted that they are also the goal for, for to take their drugs. They didn't want to expose themselves anywhere. But taking drugs now up to home, everywhere. It Meaning that there was stigmatization. Actually, I, I was so just there was no problem. I was about to talk about that. Also, we in the media, we got reports that uh, there were efforts to take the drugs to the communities. But again, the issue of stigmatization where those who thought that they would not pick drugs within their community were having challenges. Let's elaborate more about that. People who, who were not able to pick drugs from the community they come from because certainly if a person A is going to see me picking drugs, we will start talking about this is the experience that we have. Yes, and that's why others either deliver toward their contacts there to huh? their contacts were no longer there. There was now communication again. And the others will not be found. That's why they said they were lost clients. Getting lost, others they deteriorated so seriously. And even many, many of us died by the way, by the way. But not because, have, of COVID, not because of not because of Do you remember of uh, people you know who succumbed in that uh, dangerous uh, I know many, 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 many friends who have gone. Uh, I don't think I should mention their names here. It's okay. Uh, I just wanted to yeah. have uh, a, a justification here. Now, uh, what about the, the income level that reduced and uh, feeding challenges? Because we certainly, yeah. for you to live longer, you need better feeding. Uh, yes, I was still coming to that. Still, I'm talking during that period of COVID. Those were the challenges. Because now, those ones who are struggling to get the daily income, lost those lose daily income. Now food was scarce, there was no food. They became mal malnourished. They became mal malnourished. And that is why others even refused to take it, to take it, their drugs. Yeah, refused to take their drugs. And uh, also there was discrimination when the government uh, thought of giving some support to venerable people. We said they considered people like Boda Boda. The saloon people, the drivers, they say they are venerable. Whereas the community of people living with HIV are more venerable. That one we call stigma and discrimination. Yes. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Jack Kukole. Now, we want to understand a few things. Uh, now, please. Yes. Uh, this one, you had asked me to give the situation, the current situation. Yes. I think right now, they are struggling. And they are, they are hope, they are now storing their hope. Because they lost actual hope. Now, now, now uh, activities are going on, and uh, the peer mentors, the person living with the HIVS, are giving the help, going, adherence counseling is being done, follow up is being done, and the referral is being done. Are so, people 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 up well, I'm also people, sure that there are those who lost jobs. The response is. HIV lost jobs. 
Yeah. Are they coping up well? They are, they, are, they are struggling, but they are, they are, they are struggling, but still there's, there's a lot of issues. And there are those, particularly those who are already mobilized, became demobilized. They are struggling to reorganize themselves, even the networks. The networks are not there. Because by the time they came back, after the COVID-19, they found that a rural town, a rural uh, city was not a place to be a city. Now structures are different. Those who are there are from that side. See, things are complicated still. But they are coming up uh, with the support that they are currently now receiving. You know, when you talked of Nafan, I'm proud to say, but they didn't, what, whatever things you play here. Right now, Nafano is implementing Agakani, Agakani project, project, and uh, this project. What does it entail? Huh? What does it entail? The, the, the project intends to to uh, to reverse the effects of COVID-19 that was put on people living with the HIV uh, because that were now days with um, uh, nutritional support and. Um, some COVID-19 issues there. Oh, okay. Having listened to you, I think the, the, the biggest issue was that stigmatization. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the challenges during the COVID-19 uh, era was stigmatization of uh, the persons living with HIV AIDS. Now, why is COVID-19 and HIV highly stigmatized? Well, first of all, for HIV, the thing people who have acquired HIV for men, those are romantic men, those are sinners. They think, and yet, they think, they think women who have got this one, they are, they are sex workers, they are, they are prostitutes. They think this disease is for hopeless people. They think this disease is for people who are uneducated. Because people who, are, who have come out open to say that yes, we are HA positive, most of them are those who are not learned. Yet, those who are learned, are denying ID. So they all look at at those ones as being seen as what that's why they yeah. yes viewers uh, this is one duo TV and I am hosting Mr. Kokole Jack. Mr. Kokole Jack is the coordinator of persons living with HIV AIDS in Arua City that's in uh, West Nile region. And a lot of issues have been tabled and of course he has shared his experiences and why he thinks that the people are being stigmatized. What are the forms of HIV COVID-19 stigma that we are talking about here? The forms? Well, isolating some people, isolation. And uh, even sometimes um, people living in the HIV become a burden to other people. They are looked at as being problematic. We are not for us the thing that we are now. We are now the solution. We are not the problem. Yeah. Now, how does it impact uh, a person living with HIV and COVID-19 survivor? All these things that we What is the impact on the people, especially like you? Um, now, I mean, it has no rise because. The only thing is, somebody should, should find out the facts about the HIV AIDS, the facts about COVID 19, how it is, can be prevented, and uh, how it can be managed. So there is not much about that. That is what I think we are doing. Basically, that's what we think. Mm -hmm. Now, as a forum, uh, how are you integrating psychosocial support and reducing stigma among uh, persons living with HIV and COVID 19 survivors? Uh, Especially during this period. So currently, we have very strategy to massively go to the community and help facilitate for sensitization, creating more awareness on HIVs and still on COVID-19. Because some, sometimes people are thinking that COVID-19 is over, yet we still there. We are trying to protect, uh, protect ourselves and the rest. Not to get that one, and those people who are already infected, not to get infected and not to spread the virus. I don't know now. And uh, um, I think that is, uh, that's it. And we have identified uh, trained expert clients. Expert clients, these are clients who have enough knowledge, who are empowered in the skills to go peer to peer 
to, to cancel such such a plan. Maybe they need to understand something. Here to here, that means a lot. And uh, who are the, the, the category of these people? Yeah, yeah. We, we have, who are the category? We have, we have, we have, we have young, young courses. The young courses. The young courses. You mean people who were born and grew up with Yes, the those virus. who are born with the virus. Yes. We have, we have, you have many of them in the communities? Yes, we have many, many of them. What role are they, they were playing in terms of the I think they are wonderful. And we are thinking that they are the, they are the generation from now. To, when this war is like now a river, we shall give to them a very good in campaigning for this war. And, like and then there are these clear matters. They, they deal with it is possible that women who are pregnant, who are that poor are productive, then we are with elders. That you hear I'm a peer supporter for for peer adults, men, but and that those ones for women. Like yes, that. Yes. So that when you talk to somebody, we yes. understand you more and more. Unlike somebody or even a such brother may talk to a person living in the years, we will get it and somebody is ready from the group. But you have to talk. The experience and that person will be easy to tell you what to not tell. Okay, quite interesting here, viewers. This is Mr. Jack Okole, the coordinator of persons living with HIV AIDS in RUSD. And uh, maybe something very interesting that I want to ask you about what advice do you give to persons living with HIV AIDS and the general public now? Because we know that, you know. There are several issues surrounding this. What would be your ideal message to have? My ideal message to the public, first of all, everyone, is let them take care. COVID-19 is still there. Let them observe SOPs from time to time. Let them not forget. And for fellow PHS, please, it is not too late for you to adjust yourself. If you have gone wrong during the COVID-19 pandemic, this HIV is the hard work of which since 1981, and the health from the western side, uh, which is that um, Vegetan, Vegetan, then Rakai, Rakai, then in Masaka, then in Kampala, and the people here. Later it came here. It is now in western, it is in the rural, it is even in our home. I'm living with it. And, uh, and from that time, the government, under the leadership of President Yori Museli, who is the head of the HIV AIDS Nobel War, straight away came up with those things. There are now policies made, there are plans made, and there are programs made. So things started going well through the office of uh, AIDS, you can ask permission, then come in this way. And uh, things were going correctly. Up to 2006 here, yeah, things were going, but when they started to embezzle this money, global fund, there are some people who embezzled about 16 million, about 8 billion, and then things started to reverse, things started to reverse. Then it continued, up to 2011, uh, then there are also relaxed from the uh, civil society fund. It was not easy to get. So, and then this pressure of districts every year, districts between so many, now these funds that they have brought are going, are going this are, way. Are getting now, others cannot target community that is supposed to be involved. Others now go somewhere else. So that was the question. But I think still we have to reform, we have to where where we have gone wrong, we have to come back and fight the fight against the Because according to the sensor first threat history to end HIVS by twenty thirty, we have to do that. We have to see that those who are living with HIV know their status and those who are and the rest will be unsurprised, and that is where we can go. Oh, okay, that's it. And uh, viewers, thank you for sparing that time for us. Thank you for sparing that time.
to actually uh, watch us right here from one more TV uh, from uh, Arua City, that is the main city of West Nile region. I have been hosting Mr. Kikole Jack, the coordinator of persons living in HIV AIDS in Arua City, in West Nile at large, in the top of West Nile. And my name is Hafiz Pakit. We thank you for watching us. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.